Britain is a hotel nation with over half a million hotel rooms. But there's a problem. Far too many British hotels aren't up to scratch. Eminent hotelier Ruth Watson has been in the business for over 25 years and she's helping six new hoteliers get it right before the rot sets in. If I can offer advice to first-time hoteliers right from the outset, then I think I can stop them making catastrophic mistakes. She's taking them from initial concept to building and design work and sending them behind the scenes at Britain's top hotels. This time, it's Louise Oldfield and Liam Nabb in Margate. Have you got the mindset that this is going to run as a business? It's submission. Yeah. It doesn't fill me with huge no. confidence. No, I think we have. <laughs> you border the whole time on being completely impractical and up your own asses about it. When Ruth sends in her undercover inspector, they find out whether they'll make it into one of the most influential hotel guides in the world. I'm sure you want to know what James from Mr. and Mrs. Smith had to say. Margate. Once a thriving seaside resort that provided inspiration for the artist Turner, today it has Britain's worst rate of shop closures and with one in five of the population on welfare, it has earned the unfortunate nickname of Benefits on Sea. Margate is on the East Kent coast at the mouth of the Thames estuary and 16 miles from Canterbury. With only two star-rated B&Bs, most hotels in the 30 to 55 pound bracket, accommodation is geared towards the budget family market. Now Liam Nabb and Louise Oldfield plan to open Margate's first design-led boutique hotel at 31 Hawley Square, a once beautiful Georgian guest house for weekending Londoners, in more recent times eight squalid bedsits. All the things that we're going to do to it will be to the highest standard that we could Imagine, so we want to have like beautiful showers, very contemporary, beautiful baths, roll top baths that you can relax in and make it quite a special space. Louise and Liam are tying up their fortunes with Margate. They think that the town's ambitious plans for an artistic regeneration, including the building of the Turner Contemporary Art Gallery on the waterfront, will create a future market for their B&B. In five years, I'd imagine that Margate will be quite a thriving art space that attracts visitors from far. As creative entrepreneurs who met in Italy 15 years ago, Louise and Liam have previously tried their hands at many jobs, including record producing, event organizing, DJing, graphic designing, and marketing. We really see this as helping us carry on with a very flexible lifestyle because we don't do nine to five jobs. We're very keen that it doesn't overrun our life. They bought the house for 330,000 pounds at the top of the market. And even though it is now worth a lot less than they paid for it, they still plan to gamble the last of their savings on a 100,000 pound renovation. The type of hotel that we're trying to do requires quite an investment. And in the current market, anyone going into starting a business is going, is going to be making a gamble. To make this huge investment pay off, Louise and Liam need to charge in excess of £100 per room per night. But with the recession having hit Margate hard, the affluent arty crowd they wish to attract seem a long way from its shores, making this a highly risky venture. We have to see if we manage to run this business and make it pay for itself. If we don't succeed, um, we lose everything. Uh, everything that we've built up in the last 10 years. Mm. No, we don't have a business plan yet. <laughs> it's February, and hoping to be open for business in four months' time, Louise and Liam have called in Ruth Watson for advice. And this is one of the original rooms in its original state. So this is a bedsit. It is. Kind of defines the word dos house, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And the odour is fragrant. Yes. I don't think. 
And you've got um, a wealth of formica and um, manky old fridges and... Mm. Oh, my God, look at this stove. To transform the building into a boutique B&B in which they will also live, Louise and Liam have a bold design concept. The approach is to leave things a bit rough, a bit raw and show the trace of history that has kind of happened to the building. How far, I mean, do you want to go on taking we, things actually all the way back and then either fully restoring or leaving one, partly restored? It's a fine line. It's more leave, revealing layers of what was there before. Right, so but we really archaeological yeah. kind of way. Yeah, yeah. yeah, so it doesn't look all, like, pristine and new, like a yeah. Christmas cake or something. No, so I understand that. It is a very fine line. Somehow you've got to reassure people that you know what you're doing and it's not taking it to the point where they're thinking, oh, my God, I've just turned up in a building site. Yeah. Currently, the property is divided into eight bedsits. Louise and Liam plan to create just three guest bedrooms, one on the third floor that will have its own bathroom, one on the second floor that will share a bathroom with a small bedroom on the first floor. The couple intend to have their own private lounge on the first floor, their bedroom on the ground floor, and a kitchen diner in the basement, spreading their lives through three floors of the house. And this is the front larger room. My word, if there were no other reason for buying this house than these glorious floor-to-ceiling windows, now, what are your plans for this room? We have thought about it as our private lounge. Right. You having it as a private lounge <laughs> is just greedy. To have your own mm. lives threading through three floors is just not on. Yeah. It really yeah. isn't. I mean, the guests, they don't want to be trampling over your lives. I would be as a guest saying, can I have part of my money back? Louise and Liam need to maximise the profitability of this property to cover the mortgage payments. Otherwise, they risk being forced to sell in a falling market. Such a nice room. Ruth suggests that if they turn this large front room into a guest bedroom and turn the smaller room next to it into an ensuite bathroom, they can earn a much greater income. To be quite honest, with the investment that you're proposing, to not have this given over to paying guests yeah. would be insanity. At the moment, dare I say, it's all sounding very cuddly and a bit soft focus yeah. and a bit furry around the edges and rather lovely, but not terribly businesslike. Yeah. Probably sure. true, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Although their CVs are peppered with job titles, neither Louise nor Liam have any previous experience running a hospitality business. What makes you think you can be hoteliers? Um, I was a DJ for 12 years right. in Italy and it was all about creating a great experience for people. Mm. What this is all saying to me is that you're very creative people. The trouble with B&B is the product you're giving people somehow gives them permission to almost take over your life. Now, are you going to be the breakfast cook? We thought if there's going to be something that's going to get us really, really down it's going to be doing sausage and bacon every day. There is a demand for full English breakfast because a lot of people see it as a, such a treat because they don't yeah. have it at home anymore. Have you got the mindset that this is going to run as a business? It's a mission. Now, this yeah. to me is something spiritual. That uh, doesn't fill me with huge no, confidence. No, I think we have. I think we have. I'm convinced that the motivation for Liam and Louise buying this place was all to do with architecture. I think the B&B &B element was very much secondary to this. But the problem is that in the future, the B&B &B is going to be what actually makes it work. But when Ruth sends them off to B&B &B boot camp, can this couple go from stripping wallpaper to stripping beds? The tasks that I was doing are quite menial. It's not interesting. This project could so easily turn out as nothing more than a monument to Louise and Liam's artistic vanity. Louise Oldfield and Liam Nab are taking the biggest gamble of their lives. They paid £330,000 for a building in Margate divided into eight tatty bedsits and are now spending a further 100000 turning it into a boutique bed and breakfast. Ruth Watson is on hand to give them guidance with this perilous project. 
there's always risk attached to setting up any business, but Liam and Louise are looking at setting up a business not just in a recession, but in a town which is undergoing regeneration. And you've only got to look at the buildings on this seafront to know that actually a lot of this has not taken place. We've got lots of boarded up properties. And I just think that they're taking on something which isn't just about their business, it's about this whole town and how can it support them. It's dodgy. Despite the risky nature of their venture, Louise and Liam are hoping that their B&B business will help them maintain their flexible lifestyles. We've never really had nine to five jobs. We've always worked for ourselves. I think we've always had a lot of freedom and the choices that we've made with businesses that we've run, it's all about preserving the freedom that we've got. But running a bed and breakfast is all about hard work, commitment, putting the needs of the customer first. Liam and Louise might know how to design a hotel, but they know nothing about hospitality or how to run a B&B. So I'm sending them off for a 24-hour stint in a seaside guest house where I think their eyes are going to be well and truly opened. The Amble Cliff is a classic British seaside B&B in Brighton. It's clean, welcoming and characterful and charges from 65 to 120 pounds a double. Good afternoon, Amble Cliff. Can I help you? It's owned and operated by Elaine Kelman, a lifetime Brightonian who has run a successful business for 20 years. With 13 rooms, Elaine needs to employ staff at the Amble Cliff, but she's agreed to show Louise and Liam the ropes as they will be running their own show. Everything is about pre-empting what's going to come, so it's like proper preparation having systems in place to make things run smoothly. The guests will think it happens by magic. I think that's an interesting thing. This one piece will make 52 layers. Watch on mobile devices or the big screen. All for free. No subscription required. A typical day begins at 7 with breakfast. After breakfast, Guests must be checked out and payments taken. Much. That's your copy of your... Let's see it in this just balances on departure. By 10am, it's back in the kitchen to clear breakfast and prepare the food order for the following day. Then it's on to cleaning rooms and bathrooms. For the showers, that gets right into the corners of the showers. So you go... It's nice and clean. Followed by laundering the sheets and towels. Finishing in time for mid-afternoon. When the next guests arrive, and the whole process begins again. Um, the tasks are just tasks that I would expect to do on an everyday basis. On the other hand, I think because we don't have any staff to come in and help us, uh, it will be a lot more work. Having shown them the regime, Elaine takes a step back so that Louise and Liam can set about the tasks. But for Louise, the preparation of the cooked breakfast has only confirmed in her mind that she won't be doing it in her own B&B. It's too much. <laughs> it's too much. Ah. It'd be quite, you know, unbearable. This is our living space as well. <laughs> so, mm. <laughs> With great diligence, Louise and Liam work their way through Elaine's checklist of chores. Check bedspread is not stained. Leave bed to air while bathroom is clean, so we'll just strip everything off. But unused to doing nine to five jobs, Liam is less than enthusiastic about the day. The tasks that I was doing are quite menial tasks, polishing a step, cutting a tomato. So I, I haven't really enjoyed it. Um, it's not interesting. After a full day's work, Louise and Liam have experienced for the first time what they'll need to do when their own B&B opens. What's the part that you're actually most looking forward to when, when you run your own? Is it meeting all the people all the time, different people daily? Yeah, I want people to love the house. It's so special, mm -hmm. the place. I yeah. want to see, I really like that when we take people round, you've got this moment with, like, say, one particular room, you open it and everyone goes... <gasps> For me, the, the most important thing about doing the B&B is the customer to actually want to see just what people think of your decor isn't quite how I, why I would be doing B&B. Back in Margate, building work is underway and the bedsits have all gone. And 
Louise and Liam have taken on board Ruth's advice about turning the large front room into a guest bedroom. Although this couple aspire to create the sort of B&B that would make it into exclusive boutique hotel guides, they've only allocated 20,000 of their £100,000 renovation budget for furnishings. So they're scouring the local antique shops for bargains. Nice colour. Grey. What could you do with it? Don't know. But attracted to that. We're trying to do something that is in some way selling a dream or selling a... Um, what would you call it? Experience. Selling an... Yeah. Maybe. I like that. It's just a box. Mm. There are many hotels in the area that are perfectly functional, that you can sleep in, you can shower in. They're going to come and live out of a suitcase. They're not going to come and live... It's not like a holiday home where they're going to do a self-catering let for a month or something. Um, how much of a room do they need to use, that's what we'll think about. But designing a room with functionality in mind is vital for a successful b, &B. Ruth is on hand to talk to Louise and Liam about their vision for the rooms. We really like iconic pieces from different eras. Sure. So you could have industrial design classics, 20s, 30s, mm. modernist, but mm. then also um, things from even the 70s mm. and 60s. Is this typical of the kind of artwork that you're planning on putting on the walls? In some of the rooms, yes. We've made friends with a few local um, artists. Sorry. Guys. Local artists sounds really bad. I know, bad. it sounds really bad. Contemporary local artists. And um, we thought it would be a nice idea to have art. If some is actually even for sale. We may organise little exhibitions as mm. well. Mm. There's, uh, yeah, another fine line. You seem, you seem to major on fine lines, you guys, actually. This is quite interesting. You are constantly challenging the, the norm, as it were. You, you border the whole time on being completely impractical and just sort of being, if I totally read up your own asses about it. I think they want people to regard them as doyens of design. And even with the iconic and architectural features they want to bring in, they still have got to work. It can't just be all arty-farty. Tell me about how you're thinking of planning this bathroom in terms of where bath, shower and things are going to go. Roll-top baths in front of the chimney breast, um, just to respect the shape, original mm. configuration mm. of the, the mm. room. Have you thought about, again, the practicality of the bathtub? We're at the beginning of thinking about the practicality right. of the bathtub. I want to know, where's my book going to go without getting wet? Where's my glass of champagne going to stand? Where's my soap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it does, does really need thinking out. You could screw up the entire project by actually putting in place wonderful looking facilities mm -hmm. but if the functionality doesn't work then you know it's as it's worthless for a fully functional bathroom louise and liam must ensure that the roll top bath is positioned with sufficient space for someone to get in and out and the wet room shower is not too near the toilet and wash basin or they'll end up with water on the surfaces they'll also need a space for the luxury toiletries which are a vital part of the boutique hotel bathroom and a well-positioned mirror for their guests to admire themselves in. In six months' time, Ruth's sending in a secret inspector who will decide whether the B&B will get into one of the world's most influential boutique hotel guides. But do Louise and Liam have the ability to create rooms that are both stylishly designed and functional? I think fine line was mentioned a few times, and so we're treading on a knife's edge, and we have to get that. <laughs> positioning really right so yeah it's going to be quite a delicate process to get all these things right. Ruth wants Liam and Louise to realize that while they can have an ambitious design plan it mustn't be at the expense of other more practical considerations. While Louise and Liam want to keep all the character of their Georgian house in Margate, they don't want it to look tatty. And functionality is also important in a hotel. So I'm sending them off to Rough Lux in London's King's Cross, a hotel which pioneered this particular very modern look. Just as Louise and Liam hope to do with their B&B, 
The Rough Lux Hotel is a converted Georgian house in a rundown area which has become a destination hotel for a fashionable, arty crowd. Its nine rooms rent for up to £280 a night. Hi, hello. Hi, I'm Liam. Nice to meet you, Louise. Nice to meet you, Louise. Created by internationally acclaimed designer Rabbi Haj, the Rough Lux Hotel skillfully mixes new and old. With expensive modern artworks on distressed walls and opulent contemporary wallpaper alongside chipped paint. I came up with this uh, uh, concept of uh, rough luxury, if you want, or rough luxe, working on the contrast of rough and luxury, working on the contrast of the old building but with the new luxurious material. Ruth wants Louise and Liam to see that although the rooms might look quirky, they are all designed with the needs of the guest in mind. From the bath rack on which to put your book or champagne glass, to the essentials like TV sets, which are artfully incorporated into the room. An interior design project is not only about the, the packaging, it's about the people basically who live in the space. It's about uh, the place being really functional. This is the primary element of it. As Louise and Liam look around, they try to find inspiration for their own place. Yeah, look, they've had the, the leak, leak. <laughs> had a previous leak. Yeah. But it's really nice that that's left there. Well, yeah. It works really well. It's quite honest, isn't it, yeah. the way it's done? It's interesting to see a place that's done aesthetically in a similar uh, vein to what we're trying to do. It kind of, in a way, has inspired me to go full on and do what I believe in and what I feel comfortable with. Back in Margate, and for now, the design of the house is forced to take a back seat as a much more pressing concern rears its head. There have been some quite major structural problems with the roof that had been modified in the past. Some renovation phase had cut all the joists out of the roof. The unexpected problems with the roof have cost Louise and Liam dearly, and they've had to spend almost a third of their already tight £100,000 budget on putting it right. We've had to do a lot more work than we'd foreseen and obviously that has some quite major budget implications. It's May and Ruth returns to find out how the renovation project is going. Louise and Liam had hoped to be open for business at the end of this month but are now a long way off this ambition. Aha! Now this is the beautiful room that was going to be your living room. So what's the plan here? I mean, it's, it's glorious. The main, main feature is going to be the bed. Mm. We've got some quite grand beds that will sit nicely in these rooms. A sort of exact copy of a 18th century carved right. bed. What about money? Because this all sounds quite expensive. OK, think? so for three beds, it's 13. Thousand, so. Just over four thousand pounds of room yeah. for yeah. the bed. Yeah. yeah. What was the original budget it to re Roughly, it was what we'd allowed was a hundred, a hundred thousand. And how are you doing on spending it? Well, doing very well. <laughs> <spending>. <laughs> going through very fast. <laughs> In spite of the roof eating into their renovation budget, Louise and Liam are still determined to fit out their B and B to the highest standards in line with their design scheme. There's some very fabulous radiators there. Those are going into the bathroom. Right. And in here, because we couldn't figure out or didn't want to put radiators in this room, um, we put underfloor heating. A lot of work, but a very, it looks like we have I done mean, anything. a lot of work, because normally underfloor heating you do in new builds, not in conversions. Yes. Yeah. So that's extraordinary. And that was because purely visually you didn't want to sully the room with radiators? I yeah. Mean, we were struggling as well with the whole TV concept. Right. So we want to have TV. Yeah. But we like when you come to choosing where it's going to go, we found that quite difficult. Because one. it's design wise, it's going to be alien to everything you're doing. It's all very not quite well. We we'll have really, to navigate we around that one. Addressed yeah. it yet. I think it was really telling that Louise was so aghast at the notion of a television selling her beautiful design scheme. But you know, this is what people want when they go to stay somewhere. And it's actually vital that it works because that's the part that's going to produce an income. That's the part that's going to pay back the mortgage. This project could so easily turn out as nothing more than a monument to Louise and Liam's artistic vanity. As their design aspirations soar, this couple are on the verge of going under. 
You've run out of money. I hadn't realised it had got to quite such critical level. With the help of Ruth Watson, Louise Oldfield and Liam Nabb are planning to open a high-concept design B&B in Margate. But the recession has hit this town hard, and with one hotel company going bust every other day in the UK, they're hoping their business can buck the trend. The financial aspect is definitely a gamble because um, it's a massive restoration project and it's a new business for us. But with an unexpected problem with the roof decimating their £100,000 budget, they're behind with the renovation schedule and are beginning to feel the pressure. Maybe we've been a bit naive with the budget because I think we suddenly sort of sat there and looked at each other. We've just, it's gone forward like a train and we've just gone, said yes to everything, like, oh, do that, do that. Now, the drastic implications of the money situation have begun to dawn on Louise. Suddenly you've got half ripped apart house, well, more than half ripped apart, house that you literally would be selling as derelict and if you haven't got enough money to finish the renovation, then you're not going to manage to actually open as a hotel. Louise and Liam are banking on a cultural regeneration of Margate. Seaside regeneration is big business, with the government spending £46 million on arts projects alone. The hotels, restaurants and shops that set up first in these places are taking a big risk because there may not yet be a market to support their product. But if regeneration does kickstart the local economy, the first in can set the rates and be well established when the new affluent crowd arrives. Three hotels that were at the vanguard of seaside regeneration, which Louise and Liam could learn from, include The Bull in Bridport, a once chintzy backwater pub, now a luxury boutique bolt hole. Escape, Clandudno's first contemporary boutique B&B. And Swan House in Hastings, a five-star B&B in a restored 15th century cottage. With the potential reward so great, but the money situation so critical, Ruth's worried that Louise and Liam might jeopardise their success because they're too obsessed with the design of their house and aren't thinking like hoteliers. Up until now, Louise and Liam have been adamant that they won't be offering guests a cooked breakfast. But Ruth thinks they've made this decision for the wrong reasons. Part of the experience with people staying away, as I'm sure you know, is having good breakfast. We discussed that it's not going to be cooked, I think. Yeah. We didn't want to get into the sausages and bacon. It's quite an intense thing for a, a full English. We'll go through the whole house and mm. be much more difficult to air off and not have the house smell of that every day and just the impact on us. This is this whole point about this isn't just for you. I still don't see anything <laughs> emanating from you guys that's to do with people and the hospitality factor. Well, how do you feel about having kettle and, and cups and saucers and, and, and tea making well, equipment? Well, that, that will come um, within the cupboard that is kind of designed into the panelling in the no, first room. No, and... no I actually, I think it's something that we have will have to get used to. I think it's just more our personal thing that but, we're not used to kettles in rooms. You don't wax lyrical about people. So I've still got a big question mm. mark in my brain about this. But if I'm me... to welcome someone into a space that is my own, mm. then I'm kind of being hospitable and saying, come in. But the mere fact you're talking about somebody being welcomed into a space, whether it's your space or somebody else's space, it doesn't need to be any space at all to just be welcoming. You absolutely have to make the house pay, don't yeah. you? Yeah. You do have to contemplate and embrace the notion that human beings will be part of this. It's July, and two months since Louise and Liam last saw Ruth. The B&B is still not open for business, and Louise is feeling the strain. It's that classic story of it making you quite ill. Um, when you start to not sleep very well, you don't eat properly, so you, you feel rough in the morning, you're feeling very worn, worn out, and just emotionally quite wrung out. Costs have been spiralling. And now, with their £100,000 budget all gone, 
Louise and Liam have had to lay off the builders. The 20 grand roof becomes a 37 grand roof and that kind of eats into the contingency, eats into the budgets and so it's kind of been quite difficult dealing with the financial aspect of finishing the project. With the house worth less than they paid for it, they can't turn to the bank for help. You can't fall back on borrowing against the building, which is probably what we would have previously done, is gone back and remortgaged or something, and um, you can't do that now. With no hope of selling the house without making a huge loss, they must get the B&B open for business. But any work they do now is getting them further into debt. We've just had to turn to credit cards um, and personal loans um, and just basically adding everything up day to day, hoping that we can make all those like payments. I mean, that's the stage it's at. Over 200 miles away in Suffolk, Ruth, knowing the precarious situation in Margate, takes time out from running her own hotel to speak to Louise. How are things going? Stressful. We've run out of money and... Um... You've run out of money? I hadn't realised it had got to quite such critical level. Yeah, it all got carried away with the pace and the size of that building. The budget has just rocketed through the roof. You really need to get the cash flow coming in, don't you? Know, yeah. You need to get those doors open. So don't wait for perfection, because I think this is part of your problem. You're both perfectionists. You want it to be absolutely spot on. I completely see that and admire it, but it also can have terrible consequences financially. Yeah. It soon becomes clear that the worsening financial situation has made Louise and Liam rethink their attitude to the business, and they've made a radical U-turn. So you're going to dare to cook sausages? Yeah. <laughs> well, well done, because that's a very good commercial decision, and I like that. That shows you've come on a long way, Louise. Thank you. <laughs> I think we can safely say that Louise has had a reality check, and they're quite obviously gently panicking. I really hope they get over this, because actually what it's done is wake them up to reality, what this is all about. And the mere fact that Louise is now prepared to cook sausages, to me, says everything. With the need for an income now their first priority, perfectionists Louise and Liam are in a mad rush to get the place finished so they can open for business. As you put things in, you sort of come to the realisation that you might do things differently if you could, but you don't have time or money. When we've kind of finished this final rush, we'll work on the details of, you know, bring things in that are kind of more interesting. But that's what the place is about, essentially. Louise has decided to put her own tastes to one side in the interests of her guests. Yeah, the kettles and TVs, they're just a thing that sticks out but we really really understand that people like it so essentially we've we've decided to have them Liam has found some ingenious ways of making sure the rooms are functional without altogether abandoning his quirky design ethos it's for sending Morse code messages with sunlight or it's a shaving mirror <laughs> for example as the refurbishment nears its completion, Louise hesitatingly accepts it's time for a new door to open. I don't think it is quite ready in my mind now. You just have to accept that that's as it is. And what's in your mind about it being perfect is not the same as what someone else sees it as. So. It's September and seven months since Ruth's first visit. With Louise and Liam only days away from welcoming their first paying guests, Ruth wants to see if they've managed to transform the former bedsits into Margate's first luxury boutique B&B. The room Liam and Louise were planning to keep as their own private lounge, until Ruth persuaded them otherwise, is now a stylish, spacious bedroom. A far cry from the traditional Margate guesthouse room. And many of the beautiful original features of the room have been restored. Oh, look at this! Now, this is the room that was going to originally be your private sitting room, and I persuaded you that this would make a fantastic. 
fantastic bedroom. Yes. And it does. It's absolutely marvellous. And these are the beds. Yes. Yes. Yeah? yes. Very beautiful, very beautiful. Yeah. Next door, the bedsit that Louise and Liam had planned to convert into a bedroom is now a huge, sumptuous bathroom with twin sinks and luxury roll-top bath. Oh, my word. You really, really have done a good job. This is beautiful and absolutely the opposite of rough. Couldn't be more chic. And to Ruth's satisfaction, the needs of the guests have been well catered for. I notice you put a place for the champagne and the soap or whatever. Yeah. And a little niche to put shampoos in. Very good, very clever. This is top-notch five-star hotel quality of bathroom. Thank you. So, well, it is. I mean, absolutely no question about it. It is. It has everything you need. It's beautifully done. It's spacious. I mean, it's a fabulous job. Thank you. The rest of the hotel has been finished with the same attention to detail, combining the rough with the luxury and the modern with the old. And the three rooms will each be rented out for £110 a night. The top floor room, where the roof ate into such a large chunk of the budget, is now a chic, characterful bedroom with stunning exposed rafters and a stripped back original wall. And the ensuite bathroom is large and luxurious. What a difference! What a difference! I love this mirror, really beautiful. I see that we have got the rough wall over there. I have to say that. On the whole, though, you've retreated quite a lot from the rough and in favour of the very smooth and the chic. Is, is that a crisis of confidence? It's in this room, for example, there's so much structural work that's gone on, so all these walls... It's all new. ...are actually new. Yeah. The, yeah. There's about yeah. that thick yeah. of structural stuff in mm. there. And that's what we had left. I think it looks just super. And I really like this. I mean... Bedside tables like. Can I see also you're acknowledging people want tea. This, this is the functioning room. Very, very good. And television? That doesn't look quite what I would have imagined. Bit black, bit heavy. Yeah, eventually I think we might like a white TV, but it was out of our budget. Right. We need to be open. Yes. So no, we Look, um, you've done exactly the right thing. You need the money. Yeah. All of this is something you can revisit. You've done completely the right thing. Over the course of the next two years, if you want to move furniture around, change things over, either reduce the look, accentuate the look, then, you know, you have all the time in the world to do it. The major thing is to get the money coming in now. Yeah. So, good decision. Four months after they were due to finish, and with their finances stretched to the limit, Liam and Louise are finally ready to open their doors to guests and have bookings lined up. Tonight, they are officially launching the Reading Rooms, as they've now named their B&B. Am I nervous about what people will think? We are being a bit perfectionist. It's only when you see other people's impression of it that sometimes you realise that it's not a disaster that you think it is. This is exciting. Thanks for coming. They've invited the great and good of Margate to come and give their verdict on the project. Oh, come and have a look round. <laughs> With many of them running local businesses in the town and others involved in cultural regeneration schemes, their opinions really matter. This particular place is marvellous because uh, it's so different from the usual bed and breakfast you'd expect to find in Margate. I like the feeling. Mm. They've done an amazing job. It looks absolutely brilliant. I would love to stay here personally. It's really upmarket and attractive. All the rooms are spacious and it's just beautiful. It's all original, lovely chandeliers, lovely bathrooms. It's wonderful. With the reading rooms now open, Louise and Liam feel reassured by the reactions of their first visitors. I do feel positive. I do think that seeing people, if they like the rooms at this level, then when they're really finished properly, that it'll be a good thing. Someone came to deliver uh, some furniture and they said, oh, wow, you've stripped it back. You're going to refurbish it. <laughs> it's like, no, we're going to open tomorrow. <laughs> so it is, it's kind of borderline, but I think the, the people that were kind of trying to attract, I think... I have had a positive reaction. 
But Louise and Liam face a more critical judge when Ruth sends in an undercover inspector. Will Margate prevent their B&B getting into one of the most influential hotel guides? Do you think visitors are ready to come to this place in this town? Mm, that's the bit I've actually been pondering the most, I would say. The Reading Rooms. Margate's first boutique bed and breakfast has been open for one week. And Louise and Liam have already welcomed their first paying guests. But unbeknownst to them, another guest is about to arrive who could make a big difference to their future success. Ruth is sending in an undercover inspector who will be wearing a hidden camera during his visit. James Lorne is the managing director of the Mr and Mrs Smith Hotel Collection, the boutique and luxury hotel specialists. Hello. Hi. I'm James Lorne. I think I've got the right place. Yes, come in. Hello. Sorry, we don't have a sign-up. <laughs> That's all right, no worries. He searches far and wide to find the most stylish hotels for his guides that deliver cutting-edge cool and on-the-pulse design and comfort. Inside, things get off to a good start as Louise shows James his room. Wow, this looks fantastic. Yeah. How lovely. Quite unexpected as well in Margate. Yeah. yeah. And turns on the hospitality. Would you like some fresh tea or coffee? Do you know what? That would be lovely. Yeah. Okay. See you a bit later. Bye-bye. Now left alone, James can start to evaluate the bedroom in closer detail. It's absolutely lovely. Really stylish, beautiful chandeliers, a square loo. Let's see if it has the old fancy shutter. Yep, there we go. That means it's expensive. It's a lovely walk-in shower. I like that considered hole there, so you're not bending around or scrabbling around on the floor. So far, so good. But the surroundings are an important consideration for James when choosing hotels for his collection. So he heads out to put Margate on trial. A few boarded up houses over there. Still got a little way to go, I would say. The following morning, Louise delivers a large breakfast to James that includes the sausages and scrambled eggs she was once so reluctant to cook. Thank you. Wow, that looks great. Excellent. Thank you very much. OK, I'll see you a bit later. Bye. At the end of the inspector's stay, Ruth's on hand to unveil the truth to Louise and Liam. Now, I've got a bit of news for you, which is that the guest you had staying in this room last night was actually the managing director of Mr and Mrs Smith Hotel Collection. <laughs> <laughs> to, to be listed in that kind of directory is, is what we'd kind of, a, you know, aspire to, to achieve. If the... MD thinks that this is the kind of place he'd like to stay in, then that says something, I think, you know, mm. very well. If he says the reverse, of course, that's a different matter. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> it was lovely to meet you. You were very, very hostly, very good. And <laughs> I think your hospitality was excellent. So, overall, a good experience? Yeah, a great experience. And it's a wow room. You know, you do walk in and go, this is beautiful. What about the breakfast? How did that go? The, the breakfast was excellent. I had a full English breakfast. It's very good. It really was. One final question, James. These guys are really in the vanguard when it comes to Margate, and that's always been a little bit of an issue. Do you think the town's ready for them? Do you think they're ready for the town? Do you think visitors are ready to come to this place in this town? Mm, that's the bit I've actually been pondering the most, I would say. That was my biggest concern, more than your guest house. It's a good endorsement from James for the reading rooms, but will Margate be the fly in the ointment that prevents the B&B getting into his coveted hotel collection? Ruth delivers the news, along with her final thoughts. I never really had any doubts that you'd make this building look beautiful and the bathrooms would be lovely and the decor and things, and you have. How much has this cost? Let's have the final tally. Remind me how much you paid for the building. 330. And what do you think? Are you going to do our budget? Don't do it. What I do think, you I think, think the, the, the renovation has probably cost about 140,000. Right. Can I ask you, having spent approximately half a million pounds in a town which is still in the process of regeneration, do you have any regrets? It's a very difficult question. We are kind of in the vanguard here that we're kind of the only ones kind of mm -hmm. doing this thing. 
maybe is a great advantage and we can be I, there I at think the you can argue it absolutely both ways. My question is, I have to ask myself, do I think that you're going to be good hoteliers? And the answer is, if you'd asked me this six months ago, I would have said no. You were so, so channeled into tunnel visioned about the building. I really felt that the guests were superfluous to what you were doing. Ask me today, and I do feel very differently. I think you've really, really turned a corner. I think there's a big sea change. I'm sure you want to know what James from Mr. and Mrs. Smith had to say. Yes. I'm delighted to tell you that James would very much welcome having you in his collection, Mr. And Mrs. Smith. Oh, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you really are showing how hospitable you can be. I think everything you've done in the building, both of you, is fabulous. I would be more than happy to come and stay here, more than happy. And I think that you will do a very good job for the town. Thank you. It was one of our target aims or a dream to have been included in that guide because it's essentially the kind of place that we want to be and to have him as the director come here and actually speak so positively about our place, it's amazing. I think Ruth really focused us on the business and on getting finished. Having a person who's kind of got a lot of experience within this industry to advise you on different things has been really, yeah, invaluable wouldn't be open so I think it's quite good that Ruth was was there really. I was never in any doubt that Liam and Louise would actually do a good job on the house and they have it's fabulous. What I was concerned about was would they be hoteliers would they bring guests into the equation and actually I think they will. I have every hope that this is going to be a success.